because Trump is, I think, you know, he this is a whole grift, really, like this, the money that he's raising, it, a lot, it's it's dubious where it's going to. Some of it's going to his legal battles and things like that. So they're outsourcing organizing to Elon Musk's super PAC uh, and also to Turning Points USA, who has been atrocious and like uh they were supposedly going to get Carrie Lake elected governor, and that was an unmitigated disaster. And these are some of the groups that are organizing for Trump here. And this is what also, again, I'm not trying to get people to be overconfident, but this is also what makes me think uh, the Trump campaign is losing steam here. You wrote this up in Semaphore, and I hear it all the time here in New York, the anti-trans ads. They are doubling down on the 2022 strategy that was by every metric, an unmitigated disaster. Uh, they did not mm -hmm. get the red wave that they wanted. Um, the only reason they didn't, the Democrats didn't maintain the House in, in part was because the Democratic Party in New York State was so incompetent, but they were really close to doing so. And in all of these swing states, this anti-trans obsession did not have success in Michigan or Ohio. Um, Andy Bashir benefited from this in deep red Kentucky as well. Uh, I mean, Wisconsin, Ohio, all this kind of stuff. Th th this is not effective. And it's it, 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 there's evidence from 2022. But here is this ad that you're seeing all the time. Uh, you wrote about this in Semaphore mm -hmm. in Texas. Ted Cruz's ad against Colin Allred. I'm Ted Cruz, and I approve this message. Boys and girls, they're different. And somehow it's become controversial to say boys and girls are different, but they are. Colin Allred supports boys playing in girls sports. He voted against the Protection of Women and Girls in Sports Act, and he voted to allow boys in girls bathrooms, boys in girls locker rooms, boys in girls sports. That's not right. Colin Allred should know the difference between boys and girls. Paid for by Ted Cruz. Now in New York, uh, if I'm watching the Mets game or the Giants game or whatever, every other ad is Kamala Harris supports transgender surgeries in uh, in in prisons. Kamala's for they them. President Trump is for you. This is all over the airwaves. Why are they doubling down on this? It's a sixty-five million dollar uh, ad campaign by the Republicans when in 2022. Our, our friend of the show, Ed Germentum, has do documented this at length yeah. on, on in his article. They this it, it fell flat for them electorally. Yeah, it has not worked in even deep red states. In 20, so this started. I'll set the clock back to 2019. Uh, Andy Bashir is running for governor of Kentucky, and the American Principles Project, this social conservative group, starts running ads that warn he's going to put boys and girls sports. Uh, it's a it's a pretty significant buy. It it they think it tightens up the election at the very end, but Andy Bashir wins. They do it again, twenty twenty three. Andy Bashir wins. Yeah, that's the story here. That when this has been done by outside groups, it has not worked what effectively at all. What they say changed this cycle. They and Republicans is that one Donald Trump has gotten obsessed with this and talks about it a lot. And when Trump <laughs> decides he's interested in something, it gets through the discourse uh, and. And two, they just they test ads. They were a little bit nervous about this in the past, but they when they test them, they think these are breaking through. And especially these uh, you, we're talking about Texas right now, uh, Latino voters, working class vote, voters, they see this and they recoil from the descriptions of uh, what Democrats are trying to do on transgender rights. They kind of hit everything. I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but uh, in Texas, I'm seeing this and another cruise pack ad nonstop about, uh, quote unquote, boys and girls sports. Uh, significant because Colin Allred, the Democrat there, is now responding to that part of the ad and saying, no, I don't support boys and girls sports. They're running other ads that attack Democrats over the Equality Act, which would write non-discrimination on gender identity into the law. And they're attacking Democrats for wanting to not use defense, the defense budget to ban, uh, for example, the flying the trans flag on, on, on bases. They have, they think, like 20 points of attack on this issue and the other thing they think happened, I put this in the story, and I think it was the, the most esoteric part for people, but they really do think Elon Musk buys Twitter. Elon Musk is really, really does not like what he calls the, the woke mind virus. He is on the record oh, yeah. uh, blaming the woke mind virus for the reason his uh, one of his kids transitioned uh, uh, male to female. And he's passionate about just changing that discourse so that 
you uh, you were not censored. I'll, I'll just put it this way: that you're not censored if you say things things that would be transphobic that you might get you know suspended from your job from saying. On Twitter, you can say them. There are Republicans who say that opened the discourse. Once he said you're allowed to say this, and the maybe you're having a meeting as a Republican strategist say two years ago and think, well, okay, the outside group is going to run this ad, but we don't want to get into the, into that. They're very confident doing it now, and you're seeing it everywhere. It just uh, I point out it's in in Montana, Ohio, and Wisconsin. Uh, Mitch McConnell Super PAC is running these ads, and they didn't used to. Uh, and right. what what they say is that yeah, they tested them. Uh, and there's not much of a backlash. Nobody's on Twitter. Sure. People will say this is offensive. This is stupid. Um, but they're not worried about the, even the social cost of looking mean or looking, looking transphobic. Not at all. They really think that, uh, when voters hear this, it breaks through and it is so memorable that, that, uh, they can win somebody over who's tuned out the rest of the campaign. Uh, so yeah, that, Th that those are important. I do think the Elon factor, which sounds silly, I think it's very important because just when you take away the social pressure to not do something that seems like it's mean or seems like it's picking on people, then you do it. That is the the story of the of the Trump years. <laughs> that uh, Republicans did not used to talk this way about immigration. They did not used to. It's a Republican governor in Ohio who welcomed uh, Haitian migrants to Springfield, uh, and it's the Republican presidential campaign that says, "Well, we're going to." run against that and they're going to be called racist for it. We don't care anymore. I mean, it's just, they're, they're operating in a discourse that have moved very far to the right since even 2022, I think. And I'm not saying that means the ads will work. I'm saying that's why they're saying what they're thinking have done before, but now we can do it. But it's an echo chamber. I mean, I'm sorry. This yeah. is insanity. Yeah. Like well, that's the, the counterpoint. Yeah. 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 The, this, the, the, this is one thing, you know, immigration, uh, it, it drums up nativism, which is the core, really, of, of Donald Trump's political um, identity in this country. And that makes sense ideologically. And also you tie it to the economy. It's it's a trope as old as time. But the the trans stuff it, there's no evidence that it works electorally. It's also, of course, hateful. But there, trans people are such a significant minority in this country, and I think that's what underscores it. Like, it may test well, but in it, and you may get a split in terms of if you frame a question in this way: should trans girls be contrib uh, uh, should boy biological males, as as they phrase it? Um, be mm -hmm. participating in, in, in girls' sports. Yeah, you're probably going to get a reaction uh, from a, t a focus group or in polling that's going to say, okay, this is a winning issue for us. But this is not a motivating issue for voters. That's the thing that I am mm -hmm. amazed by and amused by, that they're actually going back to this well because it's been proven that it's not motivating for people f from uh, elections like Andy Bashir and... Uh, all the way down to school board races where these moms of liberty freaks got got wiped out. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And the moms, I talked to moms of liberty at their convention about this. And yeah, their their message, look, they're they're really relentlessly do it, uh, uh, believers in this, and think if they keep doing it cycle after cycle, the more people in this new social media environment who learn about uh, these t these topics, uh, I could point out the more people who learn about Leah Thomas or listen to Riley Gaines. Um, I don't want to sound like a, total, like a total evangelist or a believer in this, but this the theory is just the media environment has broken up and there are people who do not watch traditional news. Maybe they'll get these ads and they're watching sports, um, but they're, they're seeing more on content about uh, gender identity and how this is a threat to Western civilization than they ever have. And Elon has been pushing it. And so they think, yes, was this an echo, echo chamber four years ago? It was. Are are they surprised every couple every cycle when voters don't care as much as they do? Uh, yes, they but they think they think that is changing, and the evidence that they that, that they see that Democrats are worried about it is that they're. Uh, I, I mentioned Colin Allred's response to that is that Colin Allred in Texas felt the need to say no, I don't support this one aspect of what you're talking mm -hmm. about. I interviewed Allred, um, and also uh, Ruben Gallego in, in Arizona who also said he doesn't want, he wanted the anti-trans riders out of the defensive spending. And both of them stick to that position. They're not saying, I'm, I'm walking back everything. They're still very pro-trans rights. They're still the pro the Equality Act. Um, but they are acting like, I should say, for, I all read, not Gallego, acting like, yes, you do need to finesse this because enough people are coming back from door knocking and saying they heard that people are, offend, are offended by this, this democratic position. Uh, and it, it is... 
there are things that don't work at all, and then they work. I, I, you could have had a conversation in, and you did a lot of Republicans in, in 2013 about how uh, Mitt Romney lost in the election in part because he, he said such offensive things about immigration. He talked about self-deportation, and then Trump kept doing it, and then Trump won. And this is every victory. Everyone takes credit for every piece of a victory. Uh, the goal they have here, well, one, winning these elections, but then also saying we won that. That means that the discourse has moved our way on on trans rights. And that that really is a stake uh, that Republicans and conservative groups have right now is if they win these races, they will say among the many tactics that work was we brought this up and people said it, it always fails. But this time it didn't fail. That is mm. that is it is it is something they. Uh, Finally, I'll say they really do believe in. Uh, there are things that I think I, I talked about bad faith and cynical stuff. I think there's just every day there's 20 weird Harris trends on Twitter that nobody actually believes. Um, right. But talking to a lot of conservatives and covering these, these the, they, they really this fits into a large worldview that Elon Musk shares that um, 10 years ago, gender identity became mainstreamed and it is it is terrible. It is threatening and destroying Western civilization. Uh, it's just if you really believe in something, you can write some compelling advertising copy about it. And they really they really do believe it. I, 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 I know that not everyone talks to Republican strategists and, and I am very sympathetic to this idea that you can't just cover this like a normal issue. Uh, you can't just say something that's going to affect people's health care and whether they can get their medication uh, they, is, is, is a normal political issue like uh, taxes or something. I get that. Uh, but for Republicans, they think, yes, this is a civil civilizational fight and we and we need to win it and we're going to win it. I, I just think that they over like Trump willed things into existence uh, and like issues that were losing issues for Republicans based on the force of his personality and a lot of other factors that aren't at play in this election where he has the baggage of being the former president. She's polling as the change candidate. That's the thing that also I think people need to em to emphasize in a year where she's ba basically running as, you know, Biden 2.0 with all the metrics and the voters they're targeting and the policy proposals are very similar. So, hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.